This video is a warning for those who believe in pre-tribulation rapture, okay? Here it is, Revelation chapter 14. And now I can't do anything today until I do this video, because the Lord's been telling me to do it for a while. All right, so here it is. Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 7, it says, um, uh, The hour of God's judgment has come. When does the hour of God's judgment come? It comes after the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. So, Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, the Bible says the eternal gospel, there's an angel with, with the eternal gospel to proclaim to every nation, tribe, language, and people. And then what's he say? He doesn't preach the gospel, because these are the end days. What he does, he's done preaching the gospel. What he says is, now the hour of God's judgment has come. And then verse 8 says, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. So there's an important thing that you need to understand is after the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people, then the hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the Great falls. Now let's talk about this word, the hour. The hour of God's judgment, let's look at where we find the word hour also found in the Bible. Jesus said no one knows the day or the hour. When he said that, he was talking about the hour of God's judgment, which is the hour that God that, that Babylon the Great falls. And the Bible speaks of a woman whose hour has come. When she's pregnant, she's about to give birth, the birth pangs, and her hour has come. That's the hour of God's judgment. And on the bride of Christ... She just knows she has to get through it because the Bible says once she gets through with that pregnancy and giving birth, she forgets the pain and is overjoyed by it because a, a baby has been born. So for those who serve God, yes, you're going to go through tribulation. You're going to go through travail. Okay? So here, here and, and those who love God, they're like the bride of Christ, the one who is pregnant, who's the father? God is the Father. The Bible says there's the bride of Christ. The Bible speaks of a woman in travail whose hour has come. She's pregnant. Okay? Who's the Father? Jesus is the Father. In other words, she's pregnant. I'm just saying. All right, so back to this. We're getting back to, um, I'm trying to prove to you that, um, that, the rapture is going to happen after the mark of the beast comes out. So here it is. The hour of God's judgment is also the hour that Babylon the Great falls. It happens after the gospel goes out. And now look, let's look at that word hour. When we talk about hour, we talk about Babylon the Great falls. And look at what it says in Revelation chapter um, 18. Verse 9, 10. Whoa, whoa, Babylon, oh Babylon, in one hour your doom has come. So that pretty much confirms that Babylon the Great falls in one hour. But look what happens. Look at what it says in, in 17 verse 9. This calls for a mind of wisdom that the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits and they're also... They are also seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other is not yet. But when he does come, he must remain for a little while. And the beast who is once was and was and now is not is the eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. Now listen, here it is. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom but who in one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. Folks, in one hour, the beast rises to power. So Babylon the Great falls. It's the hour of God's judgment. Babylon the Great falls in one hour. No one knows the day or the hour. The hour of travail has come. Okay, and in that same hour is the hour that the beast and the, the government and regime of the Antichrist takes control. So, when Babylon the Great falls, it falls in one hour. That one hour happens after the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. 
that one hour when Babylon the Great falls. Now, they've always spoken when they say this city has fallen, it usually refers to war. Okay? Usually when they when you talk about, you know, you know, the city of uh, Damascus has fallen. That's always in reference to war. So when it says fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great, it's in reference to war. Okay? In one hour her doom has come. And that one hour, that one war, in one hour is the hour that the beast and the Antichrist rises up and takes control. Now, here's the verse that the Lord wanted me to read. Here it is. Revelation chapter 17, verse 17. For you guys who love numbers, 17, 17. Oh, there's two sevens in it. Here it goes. For God has put it in their hearts to accomplish His purpose by agreeing to give the beast their power to rule until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is a great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Folks, America is Babylon the Great. America will fall in one hour. That hour is World War III. And it's also the hour of God's judgment. It's the hour of travail. For her time has come. For those who love God, you're giving birth. And if Jesus is the Father... Now, there's a lot of people out there, they give birth to devils. This one time I knew a Christian lady who lived across the street. And she kept always asking me to come over and visit. And I, I didn't want to. I didn't... She bugged me. There was something wrong. And she's all talking about God and how she's a Christian and all this. And then I had a dream where I saw her. I saw a, a big old snake. Like a big old thick like python. Like, you know, one of those big, heavy, like thick old, like, you know, anaconda or something. And at the front of it was her face. And this thing was full of snake eggs. It was just gross. This lady was like a Christian, but she was full of giving birth to demons or something. I don't know. I just remember being like grossed out by this lady. She kept inviting me over to her house too. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, so the point is, if... God is the Father, and you go into travail. He's going to protect you. He's going to keep you safe. But you still have to go through that birth. You still have to go through the travail, for your hour has come. All right? And for those who want the rapture to happen before travail, what you're saying is you want to abort God's child, you want to abort his baby, and be raptured up before travail. In other words, you're you're expecting some C-section to happen. Oh, just put me under, put me on drugs, knock me out, cut me open, and, and deliver the baby. God's not going to do that. I'm just saying, for her hour has come, and it's the birth pangs that we're experiencing now, but when the day of tribulation happens, when Babylon the Great falls, that's the beginning of the hour of tribulation. Okay, and... The Bible says that God has put it into their hearts. Revelation 17, 17 talks about the beast, which is, when I say the beast, I'm talking about an alliance of seven nations with ten leaders. That's what the Bible says. The Antichrist is one of the leaders of that beast system. And here's what it says. For God has put it in their hearts to accomplish his purpose, by agreeing to give the beast their power to rule. In other words, when Russia, China, Iran, North Korea unite and have a, and, and their military might destroys America the great, then America's like the last we're the last country in the world that's like holding back the evil. When America is destroyed, they're going to go after Israel next. And the Bible says that the 10 leaders of the seven nations, which is the beast system, have all agreed to put the Antichrist in charge. That's what it says. For God has put it in their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to give the beast their power to rule. That means, that means Russia, China, Iran, whatever other nations are included, North Korea... All those leaders are all going to choose one guy 
that's the Antichrist. And they're going to say, we're going to put you, go ahead and put you in charge. Okay, and you know what that guy's going to do? He's going to bring out the mark of the beast. And there's going to be a great falling away. There's going to be a time of great distress, unequaled from the beginning until now. And for the sake of the elect, those days are cut short. What's that mean? That God raptures us up. Those who are still alive and remain, we who are alive and remain, and those who remain faithful, do a word study on that word remain, we who are alive and remain will be caught up to visit him, to meet him in the air, and those who remain faithful, and those who stand firm in their faith in the midst of great tribulation and travail, and, and those who are able to, to, to survive that birth. Now you got a bunch of false Christians out there saying, God's going to rapture us up before any of that happens. <laughs> so what you're saying is you don't want to give birth. You want to abort God's baby. Maybe you're not even pregnant by God. Maybe you're full of demonic little seed. Maybe you're full of, the Bible says that the devil sowed bad seed into God's field. And those wicked weeds grew up among them. And they're going to be, they're going to be gathered up and thrown into the fire. The foolish virgins miss the bridegroom when he comes. You want to know why they miss the bridegroom? You know why? Because, because they were pregnant by, by the devil. And Jesus said, oh no, I'm not, I'm not coming back until those... That, see, that there's ten of them in the room. I'm not coming back until five of them get out of here. Those nasty whores. And the Bible talks about the whore on the beast. The whore of Babylon. And what is she doing on the beast? That's Christianity. That's false, disobedient, lukewarm Christianity. And what is she doing on the beast? She's engaged in sexual immorality in a spiritual way, in the same way that, that the people of the world will worship. They, I'm see, I've seen Christians worship the NFL, the NBA, money, uh, golf, whatever it is, whatever it is of the world, I've seen Christians worship it. And when you say, hey, you know, I think that might be an idol. There's nothing in the Bible that says that's a sin. I'm free in Christ Jesus. No, I got to. Bob say by grace, by grace I'm saying who says believe in the name Jesus. And they quote all these scriptures justifying. And in my personal life, I had to stop surfing when God said no, no more surfing. I had to give up TV when God said, I, I've given away so many TVs, it seems like I'd get a TV so I could watch Benny Hinn and Joyce Meyer. And after two months, I'm watching every TV show, you know, The Bachelor and, you know, Fantasy Island and, you know, The Love Boat, whatever. And next thing I know, God's telling me to get, get it out of my house. And I talk to Christians, I know they watch too much TV. They're dancing around when... when, when their favorite team scores a football, scores a touchdown, and then you see them at church, they're standing there like this during praise and worship. Two hours later, they're at home watching the game, dancing around. Hey, did you see that? It's beast mode. I'm just saying. <laughs> they're foolish virgins. There's some people, they're impregnated by the world, and then they give birth to children who worship the same thing they worship. That's why you got an old guy who's a Christian, and he worships the NFL, and then he gives birth to all his kids worship the NFL too. I'm just saying. And it's not just the NFL. It's everything. It's either money or just friendship with this world is enmity, hatred towards God. And these, these are the foolish virgins. And when it's time to go and tra travail, they're not even pregnant by God. They're pregnant by the devil. And I'm talking, they're riding the beast. Think about that in terms of actual spiritual worship of, like, in a, I'll just say it in a sexual way. Like, a, like basically, when somebody worships the NFL and dances around during, during a football game more than they dance around in church, in a sense, that's them getting knocked up by the devil and by the world. I'll just tell you straight up. And if that fits if that fits you, you need to repent. 